And um, all right, so welcome, welcome once again. It's so nice to see so many of you, familiar faces and new faces. I am Allison Scola. I'm the owner and curator of Experience Sicily. So buona sera. Um, I'm going to share my screen right away and uh, just give me a second to um, get it set up. And let's see, let's see, let's see. So let's see here. I've been reading all the regulations as you can see because it's so confusing. It seems to change every day. All right. So I'm going to go through this presentation. A lot of you have seen this if you've been on my webinars um, this past year, but certainly for those of you who don't know me, um, it's a good reminder or a good refresher uh, or introduction, I should say. So I am Allison Scola. I'm the owner and curator of Experience Sicily. We are a boutique tour operator. And um, I'm gonna start out by doing a poll because I think polls are always really fun. And I wanna know, have you been to Sicily? So um, you should be able to type into your screen um, if you've been to Sicily and we'll see sort of, we'll get an idea of who our audience is tonight. You know, who are we talking to? So right now the no's are winning. <laughs> All right, so let's do another five seconds. Five, four, three, two, one. Okay, the polling is ending. And the answers are about half of you have been and then 53% have not been to Sicily. So that's great. So we're gonna share the love with you and all the wonderful things about Sicily. Um, okay, let's see, let's see, let's see. Um, can I do that? Okay, now let's move on to um, just again, tell, telling you about who we are, what we do at Experience Sicily. So we are a boutique tour operator. Um, that means I am a Sicily travel specialist and I am a travel designer. I'm a consultant. I'm not a uh, travel agent, um, which we don't even call this, this group of professionals travel agents anymore so much as travel advisors because we do so much more than just sell you plane tickets. <laughs> so um, I'm just giving a plug for people in my industry. But our, uh, we do a few things. Small group tours are the heart and soul of our business. I am the tour leader on those small group tours. Um, we do also a custom creative itineraries for independent travelers, and it's a very much a concierge service. Uh, we do custom small group itineraries and tour management. So if you and your family wanna go and you want me to lead the tour so you can enjoy the time with your family that is so precious, I will design a trip according to your dates and your budget and what you all want, and then take care of all the logistics for you while we're traveling. We also do heritage research and experiences. So if you have Sicilian heritage and you wanna push, uh, put some of that into your tour, that's something we can do for you. Um, I also do professional consultation on itineraries that you reserve. And so those extra insider tips, those extra neat little excursions that you wouldn't have found on your own that aren't in a guidebook, are not easy to find on the internet, that's what that professional consultation does. Um, and I'll get a little bit more detail about these things a little later. I also host a cannoli crawl walking tour in New York City. It's all in Manhattan. You learn everything there is to know about cannoli, but also a lot of wonderful things about Italian American history. And um, it really builds a bridge between Italy and New York. And it's really finding Italy in New York City. Um, I also host a lot of stateside gatherings and online Sicily inspired events. So more of that to come. And of course, lectures, articles, daily insights. I have, a, of course, a, um, Instagram for Experience Sicily. I have a Facebook page. So for, by all means, hope you're following me there. So to get to know us a little bit, Evelina is here. She's on my right side or on my left side looking at this photo. Um, she is in Bagheria, Sicily, which is Palermo province. And she is my literally my right arm in, in terms of planning all the logistics and everything for these tours in Sicily. She is Sicilian and she speaks the language of our suppliers. So she's the one negotiating all of that, all of those trips. Um, okay, so this is me and my family. There's Evelina on my right there. So just to give you an idea of the, 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 the group of people I come from, I have lots of cousins in Palermo and Bagheria. Um, Okay, so I have another poll for you. Um, let's see if I can make it come up. Let's see. Uh, okay, I don't know if I can. Here we go. 
launch polling. Do you have Sicilian heritage? I'm curious to know if you have Sicilian heritage. And then I'm going to ask you, um, from what town did your family originate? And you should write that in the chat. Um, so I'm curious to see that and you can, might be able to connect with some of your Paisani <laughs> if you do have Sicilian heritage and uh, it's kind of fun to find that out and of course I will uh, let's see if I can pull up the chat really quick and see Bagheria. Oh, some more Bagheria. Uh, Vita, Shaka, fantastic. Rob Fiori, how nice to see you, Rob. Colesano, Alessandra Caputo. Okay, fantastic. Um, Bagheria. All right, Salemi, Rita, right. Rita, we spoke this morning and of course Salemi, excellent. So I'm gonna end the polling in uh, five, four, three, two, one. I see Kakamo, Santa Maria de Bellice, Ragusa, of course, Giovanna, wonderful, wonderful, wonderful. Um, so many wonderful places. And we do go to some of these places during our tours as well. So here's the results. 42% of you have Sicilian heritage and 58% of you said no. But listen, with Sicilian heritage or without, you'll feel Sicilian by the time you, <laughs> you are uh, with us in Sicily. We wanna make you feel like part of the family. So that's part of the fun of what we do at Experience Sicily. So, um, Okay, I'm going to continue here and let's see. All right, so tonight I'm gonna to talk to you about the small group tours. I'm gonna to talk to you about our um, small group, the private small group tours a little bit. Um, you know, these are the, again, these are the, the main things that we do, the concierge custom travel planning, and then the consultation on, on an itinerary that you are, uh, you are reserving yourself. So those are the things that we do. And again, to familiarize yourself with Sicily, it is the, the island at the um, center of the Mediterranean, at the toe of the boot of Italy. And this is where we're talking about. I'm not gonna get so much into all the details about Sicily um, in terms of hi history, but just to give you an idea about the history, there's a lot of it. <laughs> the reason why it's such a fascinating place is because it has been occupied by so many different cultures throughout the millennia and uh, starting with pre-Greek uh, tribes, the Elemi, the Sicani, Siculi, and going from there, we have such a rich, rich heritage. And so on this one island that is the size of Massachusetts, the size of Massachusetts, it's not a small island, but it's not huge either. Um, you can touch so much of human history on this one island. So you can have the ancient Greek history, you can have pre-Greek history, you can have Roman history, you can have medieval and Byzantine history, you can have an Arab uh, element that's so important to the history of this island it is fascinating all the way up to World War II history because right now in fact we are recognizing when the allies landed on the beaches of Sicily uh, to take Sicily from the Germans uh, and the fascist regime. So um, Amuni, let's go. We're going to talk really specifically about travel, um, not so much the, the culture so much but of course I want to familiarize you with the island so as I'm talking you'll get a sense of where things are. So a lot of you know Taramina uh, because some of you have been on a cruise ship and maybe stopped there. It's on the east coast. It's right uh, on sort of the, where Mount Etna is. You can see Etna, which is the volcano. It's been erupting the past few weeks, um, actually all year, <laughs> but it's uh, on the east coast. Uh, Catania is the second largest city in the, on the island, Palermo being the capital and the largest city on the island. Sicily, um, has uh, about 5 million people, I want to say total. Um, in the metropolitan area of Palermo, it's a little bit more than 1.2 million. In Catania area, it's about, uh, you know, again, this is a megalopolis Catania area. So you might have 600,000 in Catania uh, immediately, but then outside of it, you've got a lot more. So um, this is the, the look at it. And then we're going to have a fun look at these sort of tourist sites. Um, this is a sort of fun map to look at where the tourist things are on the island based on a sort of classic postcard for, for the island. So Agrigento is here in the south. So we're gonna go through this now. Um, now I wanna just ask one more question because it's these polls are always fun, right? So um, let's see what I have here. 
how many UNESCO World Heritage Sites do you think there are in Sicily? Um, so just take a minute to, <laughs> to answer that question. You'll be surprised at how many you think there may be. Some of you know the answer to this because I know you've been on my calls before, but I think people are extremely surprised at how many heritage sites Sicily has. It has the most of all of the Italian regions. So that should tell you something. So we're gonna do five, Get your answers in four, three, two, one. Okay, and the polling. And wow, a lot of you said nine. Um, well, the correct answer is actually seven. So it's a little bit of a trick question, actually. That's part of the flood about this question. Um, so there you have it. And I'll explain which ones are which in a moment. Um, so here we are, the highlights of Sicily. Uh, Agrigento, Valley of the Temples, the photo you were just looking at, um, Piazza Armerina, which is where the Roman villa of Casale is. You might recognize these bikini girls. Um, we're gonna really go through Sicily very quickly. Mount Etna itself, this is a UNESCO World Heritage Site, this incredible volcano. Those are pistachio trees in the foreground of this picture, by the way. There is where Etna is. Uh, Monreal Cathedral and the other um, Norman heritage, Arab Norman heritage sites of the Palermo region, uh, Cefalu and the uh, Capella Palatina and uh, the, the Palazzo di, dei Normani in Palermo, these are all part of this incredible uh, Arab Norman heritage patrimony world heritage site. And that's all circled there where you would find those. There's like, uh, I think seven different sites within that world heritage site. Catania is part of another world heritage site that has to do with the Baroque. The, it's called the um, the late Baroque of, the, of Southeastern Sicily. So uh, Ragusa is part of that and Noto is part of that. Uh, uh, what else? Uh, Modica, Shikli, uh, Palazzola, Chiedi, um, these, all of these different towns uh, that have these incredible, Siracusa, Ortigia, this is all part of this southeastern uh, late Baroque World Heritage Site. Um, so you can see Siracusa. Also Pantelica, which is where these old ancient tombs, this is tombs that date back to um, almost 12,000 years uh, back before Christ, before Common Era, there are tombs that are, exist in this area of Sicily and it's called Pantalica and the Necropoli of Siracusa. So um, people don't know about that so much, but it is a very important site because of the archeological finds there. Um, and so that's all in that south Southeastern Sicily area. And then the Aeolian Islands themselves, the seven Aeolian Islands, they are also a world heritage site, which people don't always know, but Stromboli, which is an active volcano, is also part of that. And here they are, you can see the, the seven islands. Um, on a clear day from Chefalu, you can see Alukudi and Filukudi. It's, they're quite beautiful. And you know what? You don't need to go to Greece. <laughs> you can go to Sicily and get a sense of what the Greek islands are just from being in Sicily. So then we have um, a couple other highlights that are not UNESCO her heritage sites, but people might think they are. Salinunte, which is in southwestern Sicily, and Taormina, which is, of course, you know, in south uh, northeastern Sicily. And everyone is familiar with the, not everyone, but many people are familiar with the ancient theater, the ancient uh, amphitheater that's in Taormina that looks at Mount Etna. It's quite a stunning sight um, and to be at, and also to see a performance in that theater as well as quite a sight. But that is not a World Heritage Site as much as it's a, um, you know, might, you might think so. So these are actually the World Heritage Sites, the seven that we have uh, talked about a little bit. And then, of course, then I mentioned Salinunte and Taramina uh, to tag them on. So yes, there are like nine fantastic highlights, as you all think, but um, only seven of these are technically uh, heritage sites uh, by UNESCO. So um, when you're talking about going to Sicily, um, you know, I'm curious, and I'll read this later, and I will address it a little, bit, a little bit later, but by all means, use the chat and tell me, what do you like to do? What excites you when you're on vacation? 
what are the kinds of things that you like to do or when you're traveling let's hear it and maybe you'll find a, a kindred spirit and you'll want to to hook up with that person and meet on a tour um so that's the, my curiosity so again i'm just going to show you some beautiful pictures of spaces because and places because i want to get you to excited about what's going so here's palermo we have chefalu we have uh scale di turkey and of course one of my questions for you and I'm gonna launch another poll, is when do you hope to travel to Sicily? So I'm curious to know, and here's the, I'm gonna launch the polls. So we can travel to Sicily now, Italy is open. It's so exciting to know this and to announce this. Um, I am going and bringing a group in October. We still have a couple of spots left. That tour is filling up quickly. Um, so definitely if you're thinking about coming in October 2021, be serious about it because that trip is filling up and it's going to be spectacular. I'm very excited because we just did a little bit of a, a rearranging of, uh, or not rearranging, we, we were changing one of the accommodations and it's um, actually gonna be really beneficial. It's a very cool inn that we're gonna be staying in um, in Agrigento province. And uh, we're gonna have a special evening at that inn because of its location, the new location of it. So I'm gonna end the polling and we're gonna see uh, what you all think in five, four, three, two, one. Okay, let's share the results. So many of you want to travel this fall. I don't blame you. We're all itching to leave and all itching to go out, right? So, oh, Easter's not so popular. It's surprising, but spring certainly 2022, summer 2022, fall 2022. Good. So I'm gonna I'm gonna get in here and show you and tell you all about what we're doing um, in terms of planning um some trips for you to join me or you know to get you started so one of the things i want to tell you is what are the benefits of working with a company like experience sicily um it's because we uh we know sicily inside and out i spend all day every day thinking about sicily so one of the things i mentioned is we do itinerary consultation so this is when you reserve everything you negotiate the prices directly with the suppliers you self-navigate, but you do it with our expert insider advice. And that's the thing. So I will spend with you on the phone um, an, an hour and a half or so. And Leah, uh, who's on this call, she planned her Sicily trip. What year was that, Leah? You can type into the chat. I think it was 20... 17 maybe 2018 you had this incredible trip to sicily that was life-changing actually um so leah and i spoke a couple times on the phone to really tailor what her um needs were she has heritage in begaria and i set her up with uh, michael ducato um who happens to have the same last name as her <laughs> michael michele actually michele ducato is a um, a cart painter and so she had a great exchange in with him, he's a good friend of mine. And so it was really fantastic to set them up. So Leah can sort of chime in here on the chat and I wish you would anyway, and please Leah do, <laughs> um, in terms of the kind of information I give you and set you up with. It's as if I were planning your trip, but you actually plan it. And so the advice you get is, you know, you need drivers names and numbers and, and um, information who can drive you in Palermo, who can drive you in Catania, who can pick you up at the Catania airport, bring you to Siracusa, I can give you that information. I can give you information about boat excursions. I can give you information about cooking classes. I can give you information about the right guide to take you around Erice and Trapani, someone who drives and who guides. I can tell you where the best cheese is. I can tell you where the best cannoli are. So that's the kind of stuff that, that we do for this itinerary consultation. Um, and then we do uh, a really important part of our business, of course, is the concierge custom itinerary design. So what does that mean? It's it's designed after your interests, after your dates, after your budget. It's uh, you get an electronic itinerary that's via your smartphone, so you can navigate. It has, you can click on maps, you can click on the photos, you can click on the descriptions, and it's basically a custom design guidebook that matches your trip exactly. And we give you 24-hour support while you travel. So we have booked. What, what happens? How that design, um, that custom design, that concierge design uh, uh, service works is that um, I talk to you on the phone for at least an hour. <laughs> I, I have a lot of questions I ask you. I get all into the details and um, 
we talk really specifically about the kind of hotels you like, the pace you like to travel, um, just your travel culture, what you like to do. And while we're talking, I'm, you know, I'm formulating ideas immediately on how I can shape your trip so that it really matches what you want. Um, and then Evelyn and I work together to um, create the whole itinerary. Uh, we, after I interview you, I'll put together a sketch. Evelina, in the meantime, we'll start getting prices on the different things that we're talking about. Then I put the sketch together. We have a follow-up phone call to go through that itinerary. And then we tailor it according to your feedback. And then we book everything. You pay us in American dollars. We pay the suppliers in euros. But the other thing that's great is that we do it by consultation fee. So for example, and our prices for 2021, they may change for 2022, but for right now, our prices start at, to give you an example, a seven to eight day trip designed for two people, a couple or two people going together. Our fee is $1,500 to design your trip for you. And then from there, we give you an itemized itinerary uh, of all the prices. So this hotel costs this, this excursion costs that, this driver costs this. So you see the prices of everything and then we can decide what works for you, what doesn't, and tailor things according, again, to your budget. Um, and then we go and support you 24 hours a day on your trip. So that in itself is vital. Um, of course, we don't want any problems. Our idea is to design something that goes very smoothly, but sometimes things do happen. Like we had a few years ago, uh, as people had a trip to Mount Etna scheduled, it was over Christmas time. It snowed three inches. <laughs> Sicily cannot function in the snow outside of Mount Etna, and they couldn't get to Mount Etna. So we had to re, uh, you know, reorganize those days of their trip, for example. So those are the kind of things that we're on call for you 24 hours a day when things are going on. We're shadowing your trip. So it's really a concierge service. And this, um, the prices go up according to the amount of days that we're booking for you and the number of people on your trip. So if you add to that seven to eight day itinerary, that with, is with one couple, you add two more people to it, it's just $50 more per person. That's it. So $1,500 for seven to eight days goes up to $1,600. And that's because we do send you some things in the mail and we do deal with everyone. That also that service, I help you with your flights, your travel insurance, um, car rental, whatever it is that make that has to happen from A to Z, we cover all the bases. And that's the beauty of the concierge custom itinerary design service. And I think we might have a couple people on the call tonight that we've done that for. Um, I can't remember <laughs> everyone yet, but um, Gilda is, is, is um, or Gilda, you're, you're nodding because you, we did a couple days for you after one of the small group tours. But really the heart and soul is the small group tours that I host. And that's Part of the fun is that we get to spend time together traveling and I share with you my passion for Sicily and all my, my friends um, and my colleagues and my family. So if they're limited to 12 people and fewer, which enables us to really eat in characteristic uh, restaurants and stay in beautiful inns. Um, it enables us to give you really exceptional customer service. It's hosted by me. Um, that means that when you call, you speak to me directly on the phone. I'm the one who is planning everything and working with you. Um, all the logistics and the details are managed by, by me here in the United States with my staff here, which I'm finally uh, just adding some people after COVID. And then our Sicilian contacts and Evelina, like I said, in Sicily. Um, we have select private and clean professional transportation, which is a very important thing these days. Um, I work with uh, local expert guides at all the principal sites. So if you are at Valley of the Temples, we're with an archeologist at Valley of the Temples. Um, and the drivers as well are all local people and really professional. I bet everyone I work with as best I can. Um, we have meaningful interaction with locals, and that is really what makes your trip special. That is, in the end, the thing you remember the most, I think, after coming on a small group tour. We do a lot of off the beaten path, uh, seaside villages and mountain towns, things that you normally wouldn't get to do in a larger group, uh, just because a larger bus can't get to those places. And so that's what enables us to do this. 
and we enjoy outstanding seasonal traditional cuisine and really beautiful um, accommodations. And it's an excellent balance of structured and free time. So these are the sort of highlights of what makes Experience Sicily a boutique travel company and a special tour operator. Um, so I, as I mentioned, we do characteristic accommodations. We have interaction with local people. That's very important. Um, we hit the markets. Uh, here I am talking with Claudio who makes these baskets and he's an herbalist in the market in uh, Ortigia, Siracusa. Um, we are of course <laughs> here I am with Angelo in the market seeing the Antico Mercato. Um, we have food tours that we do through the market. So you may be a foodie, you may not like to cook necessarily, but you like to eat. So that's something we definitely do. Um, but you might love cooking. And so we have cooking experiences that are really hands-on learning traditional Sicilian cuisine. Uh, we have wine experiences. We have olive uh, experiences if you want to learn about olives and olive oil cultivation. Uh, we do cheese making visits to Casa Ficho. Here's Baldo making ricotta in Salemi. Um, one of the things I love about our spring and summer uh, tours is that we're able to go to live theater in the amphitheater in Siracusa, which is one of the largest amphitheaters in, uh, that is remaining from the ancient world. But the coolest thing is that in from May to July, they do classic Greek theater in Italian in this theater. And uh, you can get an in-ear translation. You'll, you can read the cliff notes. <laughs> it's a fascinating thing to do. Boat excursions, one of my favorite things. I love swimming off the boat. Here's Castellamare del Golfo, which is an incredible uh, seaside village. And I like to end, some of our tours end here. Um, of course, volcano experiences uh, to see Mount Etna up close, hiking and nature walks. We visit mountain towns, off the beaten villages, hidden corners. Here's Teatro Andromeda, which is someplace we can visit or I can have you visit. It's a, basically a sculpture garden. Um, really just panoramas, get away from it all. See the beautiful, beautiful intern, uh, internal Sicily, um, the castles, the history, the feasts and the festivals that have just are incredible. And that's one of the things we're gonna talk about is the Easter tour, because I think many people aren't thinking about how, how fascinating Easter can be, but it really can be extraordinary. Every day there's something extraordinary to see. Um, and one of the things I love to do in planning your trips and when I plan the small group tours is to plan them around these seasonal and religious festivals because they really give a dimension to your tour that's fascinating. Of course, the folklore, the arts and crafts, the ceramics. Sicily is really well known for its ceramic design. Um, the Opera dei Pupi, which is the marionette theater. This is actually a UNESCO recognized cultural event. Um, the history, the art history, the archeology, span the, the artwork, it's, Sicily has it all. It really has it all. And one of the things I recently did, um, and if you are, go to experiencesicily.com and you can see on the homepage, I posted recently, 52 reasons to love Sicily. And one of the things that and prompted me to create this series was to show you everything that you love about Europe and why we travel to Europe, you can find in Sicily. One region of Italy has everything that you would want for a trip to Europe. Um, like I said, just incredible artwork, uh, incredible art, ancient artwork. Then we have, of course, live music whether it's folk music or modern music, you can hear it in Taormina. You can hear it all over uh, the island. And that's one of the things, I'm a musician, so I'm always looking for that. I love going to performances. Um, opera, of course, in Palermo, opera in Catania. Shopping, of course, is wonderful. There's so many interesting things to purchase. One of the things that I'm really careful about and I really take pride in is that I, unlike some tour operators, I don't bring you to places that I have a deal where I get a kickback. This is something I'm totally against. I bring you to places and I'll point out places that I love the ceramic artist, or I, I know that you can get beautiful jewelry um, from the local women who are making it. To me, that's more important to give my, my friends, my colleagues business. It's not that I'm getting anything back in return for it. So I'm a discerning consumer. That's why I set up my consultation service the way it's set up. That's why our tours are priced really reasonably considering everything you're getting for them. And we'll get all into those details soon. Of course, then there's all the, the food. We love the food. We can talk about the food forever. <laughs> we know from the cooking classes I hosted all year on, on Zoom and uh, et cetera, there's just, it's endless. 
everything from couscous, yes, couscous in Western Sicily, to pizza that is uh, in spinchone, and then gelato. Um, here we have pasta alla norma. It's a seasonal cuisine. The seafood's incredible. The cheese is incredible. Um, everything is fresh, arancini, caponata. Uh, we have marzipan, of course pastries galore <laughs> and then um, granita which is italian ices pasta con le sarde freshest tuna you can find on, on earth swordfish incredible um just amazing fresh food we call it farm to or arm to table really because literally you can pick the figs off the tree and eat them right there uh you can go to the market and and pick up the fish that from that they just brought in that morning and it's it's quite extraordinary all fresh it's really outstanding and you know it's a different cuisine it's sicilian cuisine it's not what we call italian cuisine in the united states so it really has its own um agrodolce thing happening, the sweet and sour right next to each other all the time with a huge Arab influence, a huge North African influence. Um, it's, it's such a mix. And that's the thing that's so cool about Sicilian cuisine. So small group tours. This is again, like what I was saying, the heart and soul of what we do at Experience Sicily. And I'm going to talk a lot tonight about our small group tours. I invite you to go to our website, um, experiencesicily.com. And, you know, you click on that tours of Sicily link at the top and then the drop down menus come down and you can get to the day by day itinerary of all these tours. I cannot go through them now. I'd bore you to tears, <laughs> but I'm going to tell you the highlights of all of them. And then of course, answer your questions about them. So October, 2021 and October, 2022, we have Stunning Sicily. And so the um, highlights of Stunning Sicily are as follows. Um, enjoy three nights stay in Taramina. So this is a thing that we stay in Taramina. You're within walking distance of the Corso Umberto, where all of the shops are, all of the uh, restaurants, the cafes. Um, we're gonna do an Etna winery tour. We are on Etna for a day, um, seeing the volcano up close. We spend uh, a couple nights in Syracuse, so you can really soak up Ortigia. We do a uh, hands-on cooking class and market tour in Syracuse. Um, we stop at the Villa Romana in uh, Del Casale in Piazza Medina, which is the bikini girls. Um, we go to Valley of the Temples with an archeologist. We are in Agrigento province for a day or so. Um, really soaking up what's in that province, which is the center of Sicily, which can be really interesting. Most people don't get that far into the center of Sicily, but I love it. Um, I think it offers us something very special. Um, we, of course, get to Palermo um, and we'll stay right in the center of Palermo. You can walk to the Palazzo dei Normani, that, that's the, 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 the castle there where the Norman kings uh, had their, their quarters. Um, where the Sicilian parliament meets. We can walk right down the street to the cathedral, right down the street to uh, Quattro Canti, the center of Piazza in Palermo. Um, we're gonna then move on to Terrapani province where we will feel the wind in our hair during a boat excursion on the Tyrrhenian Sea. We'll go to Erice. We have a day in Salemi. I think, oh no, actually that's in, in, in May. Um, but the idea is that we end in that beautiful place, Castel Mare del Golfo, um, where we're right on the sea and it's just extraordinary. In October, you can still swim. The weather can be beautiful for such a, uh, really this is about extending summer. This is my, you know, I love this about this tour is we can extend summer with this stunning Sicily tour. The next tour I'm hosting is in April. Um, no. Easter in Sicily. <laughs> No. no, no, what no, say you swear to fucking God, bro. Okay, I have to now just mute somebody. Hold on, <laughs> I don't know what that is, bro. This is not real, dog. Okay, hold on, please. Hold on, please. Okay, that should fix that. Hopefully we have this person who bombed us. They are gone. That is really unnerving actually. All right, so let's see if I can go back here. And we'll share my screen again or share my slideshow. Let's get the slideshow back up. Okay, 
All right. Sorry about that, folks. I can't control some crazy people coming on this call. It's just crazy. That's what happens when it's free, unfortunately, when you don't have to pay for it. Okay, so Eastern Sicily, this is a fascinating tour because it's it's 10 days. We're based in Caltanissetta, which is the center of Sicily. It's a great place to explore the rest of Sicily. We are staying in a beautiful boutique Four Star Superior Inn. It's a centuries, uh, we'll experience the centuries old Holy Week traditions experienced with a native of Caltanissetta, Alice Bifarella, who's a licensed uh, local guide. She grew up in Caltanissetta. Her family has generations there and she's gonna be the one hosting us for the Holy Week traditions that are in Caltanissetta. I recommend that you visit the website to, you can watch our, our discussion about Easter in Caltanissetta. But not only that, we're gonna be in San Biagio Platini, which is a tiny town, but they do this incredible arches of Easter, which is all the Easter breads that they decorate the whole town with this artwork that's made of dough. It's incredible. And we'll have Easter Sunday in Prizzi, which many Americans actually have um, heritage in Prizzi, and we'll experience the, what's called the Dance of the Devils, which is this really fascinating folk thing that they do. But not only that, we're going to be seeing UNESCO heritage sites along the way. We do have an Etna Day, we have a Siracusa Day, we have a Palermo Day, and all of an Agrigento Day. So in the midst of this incredible wrapping of Easter, we have the highlights as well. And it's a really unique experience. Um, it doesn't matter if you're Christian, it's really not about religion. It's about seeing the culture of Sicily through the lens of Easter, which is fascinating. Um, so the other thing to consider is it's spring. It's gonna be absolutely beautiful, absolutely beautiful in Sicily because of, um, because of the, the early part of the spring. It's green, it looks like Ireland in Sicily during this time of year. So uh, that's the thing that's you know fascinating about it. So I hope you'll consider Easter. You may not have thought of it before, but it's a really fascinating time to visit. Um, the other tour we have in the spring, the late spring is our May, June Enchanting Sicily tour. And this is one of my signature tours. It is 14 days, 13 nights. We um, start in Siracusa actually, but there is a pre-stay pre option in Taramina, which I'll organize, I'll be there with you. Um, so if you wanna arrive a couple days early or one day early and see Taramina, which really is just about you know, seeing the cafes, the, the, it's, the, it's the Amalfi Coast of Sicily, let's say, um, it's a wonderful way to start before we get really started in Siracusa. But again, it's all professional local guides, interaction with locals, cooking class and market tour. The highlight is the live performances of the classic Greek theater in, in, in Sicilian folk music, which uh, the classic Greek theater happens during this time of year. So it's, we take advantage of that. Um, Mount Etna, of course, we do a wine experience on Mount Etna. Um, we see Ragusa Ibla. We see the Roman Villa del Casale, Valley of the Temples. Again, the hidden mountain town. So similar to stunning Sicily, but this tour has that Greek theater component and the spring component to it. Um, by the time we end and we, we pass through Palermo, of course, again, staying in the center of town, um, we end again in Castellano del Golfo, June 4th. Um, a couple days before that, we have a, a boat excursion right on the Tyrrhenian Sea. So again, it really, you, you know, early summer, you get a taste of summer early. Then we have yoga in Sicily um, with Cleo Mallon, who is a friend of mine, who's a uh, fantastic yoga instructor based in Philadelphia. So if yoga is your thing, we have this beautiful tour that is designed to really soak up Sicily through this lens of yoga, through the goddesses, through the energy of the gods. Um, and each day the practice, we practice yoga in the morning with an eye looking at how we're gonna be seeing Sicily that day. Also included in- I want you jump rope and butt booty naked right in my face so I can see that booty bouncing with maximum efficiency. I'm not gonna lie to you. I want that and I desire that. I need that. Oh, I'm so sorry. I'm here. so sorry about this. It's so upsetting, <laughs> but what can we do? So a little entertainment to break up my, my discourse here. Um, so meanwhile, fully escorted uh, with professional drivers, this yoga trip is really about being there in summer, being there doing yoga and seeing Sicily through this lens. Um, and we spend five nights of the trip in Western Sicily and five nights of the trip in Eastern Sicily. 
Um, so you get, you know, your you get the uh, aspect of that niceness of having just two places where we stay. And that's one of the advantages of this trip. So then Secret Sicily, this is a really different kind of trip. It's for people who have been to Sicily before often. Uh, Jilda, you've been on this trip. You can talk about it in the chat. Um, <laughs> so uh, this is a, a wonderful 10 day trip. We stay in the town in the village really of Lico di Eubea, which has 3000 people as a population. Um, we, uh, we're really part of the town. You stay in, the, there's a bed and breakfast in the center of town, but also we also have apartments that people stay in. And I pick apartments according to what your uh, physical ability is, because if you can't do stairs, I put you in an apartment that is on the ground floor. Uh, if you can do stairs, I might put you on the fifth floor, depending on how old you are, right? So, um, so, but that's really what life is like. You know, you're really living in the town. The thing that's cool about Licodia Eubea is the location enables us to visit so much of Sicily from that town. So during the day we go off and we do our, our sightseeing. Um, we have opportunity to swim because then at night we're back in the mountains where it's cooler um, and the town itself comes to life at 10 o'clock at night. I know it sounds crazy, but it, it, it does because you know people sleep during the day. So you'll have time to sleep during the day too on the bus and, and at the beach or even uh, the, the, the schedule of this is really designed to soak up being in this town and being part of the town and getting to know the townspeople in the evening. The other thing that's delightful about it is that it is during the week of their, their festival for their patron saint, so um, Santa Margarita. So we get to experience you know, a whole week of leading up to the procession of Santa Margarita and then the big um, event of all of the entertainment that happens um, around that feast. But at the same time, we're here again. Uh, we, at the same time, wow, I'm just going to be fighting this the whole evening, aren't I? So I'm trying, I'm trying folks. Um, so Secret Sicily gives you the option, gives you the uh, opportunity to get into Sicily in a much deeper level, um, to really stay in one town, to feel like you're living amongst, amongst the local people. Um, and all of the places we stay are within walking distance to the main piazza. And we eat every morning in the, the central bar. It's literally called central bar. So we have breakfast, you know, you can have your cappuccino and your espresso right at the bar with the local people every morning. So, um, this this is just one of my favorite trips just because it's um it we get to get really deep into sicily now i added this coming year 2022 a Pre palermo prelude tour because um it we see so much of eastern sicily on the main itinerary we don't see palermo but so many of the people on this trip last year uh, last time when we did it in 2019 they wanted to do palermo also so i added three days in Palermo. And the cool thing about it is that this is during, and it, it's exactly a year from now, which is so exciting. Tomorrow, the 14th of July is Il Festino, which is the big feast celebrating Santa Rosalia. And um, so the cool part about the prelude of this tour is during Santa Rosalia. So not only do we get to see Santa Margarita in Licudia Eube, but we get to see the big city Santa Rosalia feast, which um, has its own character. And, and uh, we'll, I'll have probably Julia, uh, who is my cousin, who's also a local licensed tour guide. I'll probably have her join us um, so she can really explain to us all of the sort of what's going on kind of stuff with Santa Rosalia, with Il Festino. So this is a fantastic opportunity to see a lot of Sicily in the summer. This happens to attract a lot of school teachers just because of the, the dates do. And so I highly recommend that for, for your friends and loved ones who are school teachers, you know, come on this <laughs> and family too, you know, for kids. It's also designed for kids, um, for families um, because of the, the, the sense of the, being in the apartments. Then we have a new tour I'm doing with a, a photography teacher called, uh, whose name is Don Toothaker. He, and he's part of Hunt's Photo in Boston. Um, this is at the beginning of September and it's designed for photographers and Don is a master 
a travel photographer and teacher. He's in Maine. He texted me this morning. I'm in Maine. He just got back from Alaska. He's, he's been in Iceland. Uh, you name it. He's traveling all over the world um, doing these photography tours. And so he called me to do Sicily, which is so cool. I feel so excited to work with him. And the neat thing about this is we're going to be based in Shaka, which enables us to see the fishermen doing their fishing fishermen thing. And photographers love stuff like that, right? And then we're going to be, so in Shaka for, I think, four or five nights, and then Catania for the remaining nights in the province of Catania um, at an agriturismo there in the mountains. So you get the, the both, uh, both things. You get the, um, the, the town of Shaka right on the sea, which is the southwestern Sicily, and then in the mountains of southeastern Sicily, um, sort of at the, the start of the Iblean mountains there. Um, and it really is maximized so that you can get fantastic photo opportunities and Don can spend time with you setting up shots and teaching you about light and everything. So we, we have the highlights of Sicily, for sure, Palermo, Agrigento, Syracusa, Mount Etna, um, but then also many off the beaten path experiences, including the St. Joseph's Day Festival that happens in September in Palazzo Adriano. Palazzo Adri Adriano is the town that if you're familiar with Il Nuovo Cinema Paradiso, this movie by Giuseppe Tornatore, that was filmed in Palazzo Adriano. Um, although Giuseppe Tornatore is from Bagheria, the town my family is, um, he placed the mythical Bagheria of old in Palazzo Adriano. And it's just beautiful. And so we'll be there uh, for the St. Joseph's Day Feast. So if you have a photographer friend, this is a fantastic tour. It's limited to 10 people. So we can really pay attention to all the photographers, lots of interaction with local people, natural beauty. Listen, you're still on vacation. We're gonna be going to the beach a couple times because it's September. <laughs> so, so note that um, this tour is gonna fill up very fast. We haven't started receiving or um, we haven't opened registration yet because Hunt's photo is taking care of that and they're getting everything set up to do that. But very soon the announcement will be made about photography in Sicily. Then we have Stirring Sicily, or our Cooking in Sicily program. And this is an extremely popular tour. So I added two, two of these for 2022 because it's so popular. In fact, the second tour, which was actually the first one I had, um, but now I've added the second week or the first week, if you will. We have tour one from September 14th to September 21st and tour two from September 28th to October 5th. They're exactly the same itineraries, just a couple weeks apart. Tour number two is sold out. I am taking names for a wait list right now. And I'm in the process of um, getting deposits from all the people that are currently on that list to ensure that they are for real. So um, if you want on, uh, to be on that wait list, certainly you can, but I would love to see you go on the first week, uh, that September 14th to 21st. So Nino Elia, who is a Sicilian born chef who lives in Pennsylvania and lives Pennsylvania. He is my co-host for this tour since I am a home cook, but Mino is not, he's a professional cook. And we work with um, some incredible cooking schools and uh, chefs in Sicily during this trip. Um, we have three hands-on cooking classes um, of Sicilian dishes. We uh, go to a, a winery that's a really, <laughs> now it's, it's a it's not your quote beautiful winery because we're really getting to winemaking. We're really learning about the winemaking process during our wine visit in this tour. Um, it's in the Alcamo region, which is near Castel Mar del Golfo. Um, we do visit, of course, UNESCO heritage sites because you can't cook all the time. Um, I, this trip is designed for people who love food. Certainly we're doing that the food tour in Palermo. It's very food focused. However, we're not in the kitchen all the time, which is why this trip is fantastic because you are seeing sights as well as enjoying being on, you know, it's September again. So we have a beautiful Terranian Sea uh, coastal tour. We stay in the same inn, which is an olive farm, the entire trip, which is again, this is an eight day tour. Um, so we have a lot of fun on this trip because again, we stay in one inn, and we, we're all in the same uh, villa, basically on the property of this, this agriturismo. And, you know, food in general, you just immediately become family when, <laughs> when you love food and you're cooking together. So this is a fantastic, fun trip. And uh, again, I am offering two of these in 2022. So I hope you'll join me. And then once again, we are having Stunning Sicily in 2022. So if you can't make it with us this year, 2021, 
we have the same itinerary in 2022, starting in Taramina and then ending again in Castellamar del Golfo. Um, so you can extend your summer in 2022. So Amuni, let's go, <laughs> let's go to Sicily. Um, so of course, many of you have questions about what the current regulations are for entering Sicily um and, or entering italy in general and i will say this i'm confused <laughs> okay so if you're confused so am i <laughs> it seems to change every every week um but i'm going to give you what i know is factual now and then when we are leading up to our trip well i'll be that's the advantage of traveling with someone like me is i'm constantly paying attention to how the regulations are changing and i will make sure that you know what you need to know so that you can can safely travel there so the point is immunized Americans who have received shots from Johnson & Johnson, Moderna, and Pfizer. These three particular, uh, which is what we have here in the US, these were three particular vaccinations. Um, if you are fully vaccinated for at least two weeks since you received them, you can enter Italy without a problem um, and without having to quarantine now. Um, you are required to complete the, the European, European Digital Passenger Locator Form. Um, and this is so that they can trace where you are in case problems arise once you've been uh, on the road. Um, and then you have to present what's called the COVID Green Certificate that explains you meet one of these following uh, regulations so that you have completed the prescribed anti-SARS-CoV-19 uh, vaccination cycle at least 14 days ago, or that you have recovered from COVID-19 and that you have a doctor's um, thing that says that you have enough antibodies, right? Or that you have taken a negative molecular and antigen uh, swab test within 48 hours prior to entering Italy. Okay, so it's or one of these three things require is required for you to enter Italy. And that way you don't have to quarantine. However, I do recommend that you still take what's called a COVID tested flight. That means everyone on that flight has been tested for COVID prior to getting on the plane. And so your safety will be in hopefully ensured by the fact that everyone has tested negatively um, within 48 hours of, of getting on that plane. So Alitalia Delta from JFK and from Atlanta. Um, and then we have uh, different companies such as American Airlines and United um, are offering these COVID tested flights and more of the companies are adding them every day. So, you know, when we make your reservations on the flights, we'll start paying attention to this stuff. Um, it, it's really like you have to just read when you're when you're planning your, your travel. So again, it's a required uh, COVID test 48 hours prior to your departure. Um, it has to be negative, of course. And then once you arrive in, in Rome or in Milan, you have to test again. They're literally right there. I took one of these tests, these flights in February. I flew to Italy. I was there for a month in Sicily. As a student, I entered a as a well, student to study Italian. I enrolled in an Italian school in Syracuse. Uh, so I took lessons, I took private lessons, but it was a way to get in. Um, and so I did take one of these COVID test flights with Alitalia from JFK to Rome. As soon as you get off the airplane in Rome, literally they funnel you into a, a, a arrivals corridor hall and they have labs set up right there and to give you your swab test. And if you have a connecting flight to Palermo or Catania, they, um, they give you priority to get those tests so that you can get your results within 15 minutes and get you on to the next. You have to go through customs then and then onto your flight. So um, it's it's really Alitalia was what I flew and they did an excellent job. It was really well done. Um, I will tell you, it's not fun. I'm sure some of you may have flown already in the United States. We know like traveling with a mask on is not fun, but it is what is necessary right now. And hopefully if people get vaccinated, um, this will change. We have to just convince people that it's okay to get vaccinated and that the world can get back to somewhat of a semblance of normality. Um, if we get vaccinated, we need to get better herd immunity. So think about that um, if you're questioning getting vaccinated or not. Um, I hope you'll reconsider because to, for us to get our economies back, for us to get back in business like someone like me um, who suffered a great deal from this, um, please get vaccinated, <laughs> that's all I'm asking. Um, okay, so uh, again, negative COVID test and then returning to the US right now is still required to take 
a COVID test uh, no more than 72 hours before departure. So even if you're vaccinated, you still have to present to the United States, that is when you're boarding your flight in Italy, that you have a negative COVID test. And if you come on a trip with me, um, I will make sure that we all get that test and it will get sorted out. Um, it's not included in the cost of our tour because it's nothing that was budgeted when I created the price of the tour, but certainly they're 15 euro in Europe. It's not like here. It's um, well, even here, a lot of your insurance covers them, but it, it's not expensive to get the COVID test. And I will ensure that we all are able to get them before if that is still required when we are going in October or hopefully next year, this won't be required. But again, it depends on everyone working together to make this um, vax, uh, this virus go as far away as it can. <laughs> so, and children are not required to be vaccinated when traveling. Um, once again, I host stateside events. I hope you consider coming on a cannoli crawl with me. The next one is July 24th, which is coming up. It's in New York City. More dates will be announced very soon. And then of course, in the fall, once things get, um, when I'm back from Italy and once uh, the weather is cooler, we'll do more online events and we'll certainly do um, the live events that I have always done, like Santa Lucia and, uh, and uh, St. Joseph's Day, etc. I look forward to seeing you in person very soon. So I'm going to unshare my screen here, <laughs> but I definitely want to hear from you. Um, hopefully we won't get bombed by somebody <laughs> who's obnoxious, um, but I can answer your travel questions and I'll be on as long as it takes. So, but in the meantime, please don't hesitate to reach out to me um, by email or by phone. Um, and one of the things that I, I started on my website, and I'll show you in a moment, um, is um, I now have an online calendar so you can find a time to call me. You can schedule a 15 minute phone call with me to get your questions answered, to talk to me about the tour that you might be interested in, or to ask me which tour you think would be best for you. So um, I'll show you, and then here's the list, by the way. <laughs> here's the list of the one euro homes in Sicily because the, many of you have a question about this. Um, so we can talk about that in the, in the Q&A, of course, too. But I wanted to show you um, uh, on my website, on experiencesly.com where you can go to sign up for one of those appointments if it's something that we can't get to your question tonight. Um, I hope we can, but certainly under the contact us page right here, you can schedule a call with me and you can see my available times for these 15 minute phone calls. So, um, you know, going into the next week or whatever, let's say, you know, that you are available next Thursday, you can find a 15 minute time slot to book yourself in to my calendar. Um, once again, so that's under the contact us link on experiencesicily.com. Okay, so please, um, I'd love to talk with you. I'm, uh, I'm always happy to talk about Sicily, but I, it helps me to have a phone appointment with you because I have to get their work done. Of course, there's much, much work to be done. So I'm going to, um, let me see if I can unshare my screen and um, I'm going, and so, you know, unmute yourself uh, and I will go in the chat and see um, <laughs> what you all have to say. Um, let's see. Uh, all right, let's see, let's see. Will summer activities like outdoor theater be extended into the fall this year? Also, what is the weather like in October? So Anne, um, Lefevre, and this is a good question. They have extended the um, theater this summer in Syracuse through July, but no, there's no plans, unfortunately, to do it into October. Um, but this year it is a little bit longer. Um, to, to match the demand that people have. The weather in October is, um, it can be rainy. However, it can also be absolutely beautiful. In the past two years, I've been really paying attention to the weather. It's been beautiful. And it's also been you know, warm enough where you can swim. The, the Mediterranean is a very warm sea. Um, and so we can swim into that October 14th uh, date, in fact, like this year. So it's, a, and Sicilians will tell you it's one of their favorite times of the year um, is October. Um, many people, I, you know, the, this, the Enchanting Sicily Tour and the Stunning Sicily Tours are really at the optimal times for, um, 
for for doing a whole tour of Sicily because the weather during those two times of the year is, is really wonderful. Um, so, you know, each tour has its uh, advantages and disadvantages, let's say. Um, okay, sorry, I have to go to the grandkids. Of course, I understand. Um, if you assist with getting flights and there is a problem, can you help us rebook? Absolutely. Yeah, and generally what I do with flights is I um, will set up a time to talk like in half an hour to an hour on the phone and we will look at what's available, the prices and work out the itinerary according to what works for you. Some people don't like quick layovers. Um, some people like quick layovers. Um, and you know, depending on what your abilities are in terms of movement, uh, we will pick a, an itinerary accordingly. And, um, and then of course, some of you wanna have a, a premium economy and some of you want uh, first class. So all those things we can, we can work together and I can help you with that. And a lot of the, you know, Alitalia for example, right now is, um, you know, they're offering free change, you know, one change without a, a penalty, um, et cetera. So some of these airlines are offering um, options to change. And then of course, if, if you happen to test negatively for COVID um, before you get on your flight, God forbid, um, they also will uh, give you a voucher to travel uh, in the future um, if you have to cancel that flight. However, bottom line is we really have to look at travel insurance, which I do provide uh, quotations. I sell like five different companies, uh, different policies of travel insurance, and we can find the policy that's right for you. And also that would cover um, any kind of uh, crazy stuff that could happen. Um, so there, there's an answer. Okay, <laughs> thank you for mm -hmm. uh, S S Norman. I don't know <laughs> what your your name is, but your Zoom name is. Uh, I appreciate that comment. It's not. Uh, it's something that has not happened to me. I've been very fortunate, mm -hmm. actually, this whole time not to be bombed <laughs> on a Zoom call. Mm -hmm. But there's always that first time. So here we go. Um, all right. So who else has questions? Please, uh, you can direct message me or you can um, turn yourself off of mute for a moment if you can. If you can't turn off mute, it might be because of a setting I put here, but definitely want to um, answer. Prego, Giovanna, prego. And uh, happy anniversary. Uh, Giovanna just celebrated her was 85th anniversary. No, that's not right. Howard turned 87, but you had your 54th anniversary, I think it was. So um, on the Yoga and Sicily trip, where are the inns located? Do they have a pool, refrigerator, or somewhere close to get a, a bite to eat? Yes, these are good questions. Okay, so the Yoga and Sicily um, tour is, like I said, two different Agri Turismi. Um, the first one is in Scopello, which is Castellamar del Golfo. So it's in the village of Scopello, which is a, um, a fishing village of, of Castellamar del Golfo. Um, it's actually a vineyard. It's a little vineyard um, where we're staying and it's a family run place. Um, it has a beautiful pool. It has beautiful places to lounge. And of course there's a nice uh, part of obviously having a yoga trip is that you have a nice <laughs> flat lawn that overlooks the sea. <laughs> so you can practice yoga there. You can walk into the village and um, certainly, and also the inn itself has a beautiful, wonderful restaurant. And uh, so that's the first one. And the second one as well has a beautiful pool, has a beautiful prato um, lawn that we can practice yoga on um, and, and fantastic food in the restaurant. That one does not have um, places you can walk to, but again, we, we're gonna be out and about during the day. So there's always opportunity to go shopping. And um, in terms of refrigerators, it's not actually very typical in Sicily in uh, most places do not have refrigerators in the room. But these places are small. So if you had something you wanted to purchase and put in the refrigerator, we could talk to the inn and they'll put it in the refrigerator that you can um, access through the, the restaurant or something. So it's always, we can always work with the inn. That's the nice thing about these small family run places is that they're very accommodating to us. Um, okay, I'm leaving from Atlanta to Rome on August 31st on a Delta flight. Do I understand that by today's rules, I won't need the 72 hour advanced negative test upon arriving, just CDC form. As far as I know, right now, the answer to that is yes. You don't need the advanced negative test upon leaving, just the CDC form. However, if you are taking a COVID tested flight, which Delta Alitalia from Atlanta, many of those flights are considered COVID tested and that is for the peace of mind for everyone on the flight now. 
you will have to present a negative test to them. So read what's on the reservation. It will tell you on your ticket reservation. And that's what's very important is that you should be, you must read what's on the reservation. Um, I hope that answers your question. So, you know, but for sure, these, this regulation that we've been talking about, I read today that it's in place until October 31st. So, but if something happens, like the Delta variant ends up being like a real problem, things might change. So unfortunately, this is how we have to be. And that's why <laughs> having travel insurance is important and being able to be flexible <laughs> is important. So I'm being very careful with having just the one October tour because I think that things will be um, clearer by the time we get to, the, to September. Um, okay, is it a secret? Is a secret and pre tour a recommended tour for the first time visit? Yes, you can also do um, Secret Sicily uh, as a first visit. Absolutely, you're going to see a lot of Sicily. Um, in fact, you know, people who uh, have been on this trip, many of them had been to Sicily before and they were happy to visit Valley of the Temples again because it's just a fascinating site. I mean, how often do you get to go to a, a pre, a pre uh, you know, a place that's been around since 600 BC? Uh, not too many. <laughs> so, um, so yes, it's absolutely, uh, you'll get so much out of it. It, it. Even if it's your first visit to Sicily, it'll be so memorable for you. Um, We'll follow up by phone appointment and group of friends in October 2022. Great. I know that my friend Camille, yes, Camila is coming with me in October. I'm very excited. Um, we have, I'm so excited about this trip. It's going to be so cool. Um, so yes, great. Set up an appointment with me. Again, use the contact us uh, page on my site and find that, that schedule an appointment um, and we'll, we'll talk on the phone. Uh, John, hello, John. Nice to see you. John Key is here. I have his books here on my bookshelf. Uh, you know, he's got uh, Seeking Sicily is one of his books and then uh, Sicilian Sicilian uh, Sensations. Is that the one? I can't remember now, but he's got two wonderful books about Sicily. So John Kihi, he uh, check those out. Um, and he has asked, is the test available at the airport? Atlanta FDR. Uh, and thanks, Allison, your friend John Kihi, of course. Okay, so, um, so I think you might mean uh, JFK. Uh, not FDR, but JFK, we're getting our presidents confused, right? So um, I can tell you that, yes, at JFK, and I'm not sure about Atlanta, but I'm thinking it's probably the case. Um, and certainly we can look that up. JFK for sure. In fact, that's how I took my COVID test prior to leaving in February. I went to the airport like five hours before, four hours before my flight. And I took, and I had a reservation to take the rapid test at the airport. It's caught, it's costly to do it that way. I think it was like $150 for me to do my test that way. Um, but I, to me, it was fine because I knew it was within the 48 hour window. I knew that Alitalia would accept it. I didn't want to have any problems. I wanted, I had everything it was like, I'm getting to Sicily. So that's what I did. So, um, so yes, in the airport itself, they have uh, rapid tests available and it just helps to do a little research. And, and once you look on the um, Alitalia website, it will tell you, it will tell you. Um, so yes, Rome in terms of, uh, in, in, in the rapid test in Rome, that is included in your flight actually. Uh, for the COVID tested flights, the, the test on the other side, that is included in your flight cost. So you get off the plane and you're immediately funneled into the testing area. You have no choice. <laughs> so, so by all means, it's, it's really easy once you get it to Italy itself and they, and they turn it around very quickly. So thank you. Um, yes, yes. And what else do we have questions here? Um, okay, I have a new message. Let's see. My co-traveler would like to see this presentation. Where can she find it? Okay, so I have been recording it, I believe. Yes, it's still being recorded even with our bombing going on. Um, I apologize <laughs> for that, but it, I am recording it and I will be uh, posting it to YouTube. It will be public and I will be sending out the link to it um, as you know, within the day or so. Um, generally tonight overnight, I'll, I'll transfer it to YouTube and then um, I'll do a follow-up email to everyone who's registered for this event and you will get the link um, to, to pass the link on to your friends. So please do share it. I really appreciate it. Um, okay, let's see who else has questions. Let's see, let's see. I have, a, I can't get mine to go through. 
Just quick question is when yes. I make an appointment on the phone, is it East Coast or West Coast time? Because I'm on the West Coast. It should, the website should reflect where you are, where the, your Perfect. browser is. Perfect. So, Thank you. Yeah, it should be reflected in, in what you see. That works out great. Thank you. I just had to make sure. Sorry. Yeah, no, no, absolutely. That's a great question. Really good question. Okay, Rob Fiori. Hello, Rob. Um, could you talk more about the heritage research? I'd love to be able to surprise my mother with family. Yes, of course. So, um, and uh, uh, yes, okay. And to answer, uh, Gilda, to answer your question about Air Italy, Air Italy went bankrupt in February, 2020, and they do not exist any longer, or at least not in the same way that we thought they were. It's very, very sad. So that's a quick answer to you. Yes, question. thanks, thanks. No more Air Italy sadness um so back to rob fury's question about heritage research so yes um we can we this is something that we do i say we because uh joe ravo um helps me with this um basically how it works is that rob you would collect what information you know family stories um uh, some some maybe you have a marriage certificate or you have a birth certificate so you know something about your family heritage and um, and then we research from those sort of the beginning, if we can then, before we say to you, yes, we can absolutely do this, we figure out if we can do it um, because we wanna do a little bit of poking around. Some towns, for example, I saw that someone had heritage in, in Santa Margarita de, Be de Belice. This town, for example, because of the 1968 earthquake lost everything. There's no information, so sad. There's no information about anyone prior to, I think before 1927, I think for some reason they have from 1927 or maybe even not. So people with heritage from that town, particularly I know we can't do much for you, but some other places um, it's possible and we can do a lot. And so we, before we sell you that we can, we, we get some preliminary stuff from you and then we start the research. Can you and hear me? Yes, I can. Oh, okay. I have um, I have a ton. I ha I hired a genealogist I don't know maybe five six years ago, and yeah. have that side of my mother's family back three hundred years. So I have a lot. I have birth records, marriage records, death records. I have excellent. And what town do you? We want. Recall? I have. Do you recall what town? Chaka. Oh, fantastic! Awesome. Yeah. Okay, so what happens then is I have a local insider in Chaka. Um, and uh, we would work with her to uh, go to do some, you know, in-person research for you. If, if uh, you know, basically we taking what you have and what we might find out in addition. And then if there are living relatives, she would get in touch with them and we would set up uh, a meeting between you okay. and your living relatives. And it's really awesome. <laughs> it's really fascinating. So not only would you, visit Shaka and we would make sure that you have some kind of experience in Shaka to understand the town, um, which is just a fascinating place because of the ceramics, because of the coral that is history there, because of the fishing community. Um, there's a lot of interesting stuff to do there. But also if you have living relatives, we would try and uh, even if it's like a fifth cousin or something, we would do our best to get in touch with that person or those people and connect you with them. This is something that we do. And the local insider, uh, will speak English and Italian and be able to help translate any right. conversations. And that's an important component of that. So yeah, this is how those heritage experiences work. Um, and, you know, and that's where the concierge service comes in handy because for example, last February, we had a family who had um, living relatives in Palazzo La Criede. And um, once they met the, first of all, the relatives are always a little like, really? we have American cousins, I don't believe you. you know? So sometimes they're always a little like skeptical, but then when, so in the case of this family, once they met the rel the American relatives, they fell in love with each other. Yeah. <laughs> so this happens all the time. And then they were like, Allison, we want another day in Palazzo La Criede. Can you rearrange our schedule? Can you get us another driver? This kind of stuff. So that happens often. Um, so we, you know, we wanna be able to, build in some cushion for you so you can really meet your relatives. It's kind of cool. Right. So does that answer your question, Rob? It does. Know. Thank you. Okay, good. Excellent. Um, 
John, I hope to see you in the fall. I want to drop down to Sicily sometime in October. Yes, John is working on a new book. So let's hope, I would love to see you, John. Of course, I'd love to see you there. So let's see. All right, and Rita, thanks for joining tonight after talking to me earlier mm -hmm. today. Um, I would love to host you on Enchanting Sicily next year. It'd be fantastic. Um, that tour is just, it just covers everything. If you really want the comprehensive uh, trip in Sicily, if you add even just a day in Taramia and when you arrive earlier, you'll see so much of the island. You'll really feel like you, you, you got everything out of a trip to Sicily that you, you could. And then you want to come back the year after for <laughs> Sicily. <laughs> so, all right. Who else has a question? Anyone else? We have a Allison. Few yes. Camila here. Hello, um, Camila. Question. Um, do, do you know, uh, as far as masks are concerned, um, are they requiring masks in the churches? Or I know a lot of our stuff is outside. Um, but what about the restaurants and things like that? What's the requirement yes. so far? Very good question. So yes, outside masks are no longer required, except like if you're in a situation where you're, you know, in a crowded market and you might, you might want to put a mask on. It's not required, um, outside, but inside, yes, it's, it is required inside, um, and similar to, uh, what we were doing, say six weeks ago. Um, in New York City, um, before our regulation changed, I think when you're eating, when you're walking around the restaurant, you have it on, and when you're at the table, you can take it off. So, and that's how it was when I was there in, in February and March. Um, you know, it's the same thing. When you went to the ladies' room, you put the mask on, and then when you got back to your table, you could take it off. One of the things that's also nice is that we can eat outdoors a lot, so then that removes that issue. Um, but again, these things change uh, from week to week. Right now, right. Sicily is in a white zone, which is very good. Um, but they're watching those numbers really carefully. Today, I heard you know that they're watching the numbers, and and they might pull back some of the permissions at the moment because they're concerned about the Delta variant. And the reason why they are in Sicily, particularly, is because Sicily is rural, and so they are concerned about their hospital numbers, like the beds in the hospitals. And so they they're very aware of being able to accommodate people who are sick. So I'm, I'm watching it very carefully. Let me tell you, because <laughs> our whole, our whole trip is hinging on that. I, I'm very optimistic though. I think that people in Sicily are so determined to make life go back to normal as best they can. And they, they know for their economy, they need to get vaccinated and they need to make it happen. So um, actually I was just looking at the numbers before we started and specifically, particularly, um, the numbers are as of today, um, 87.30 or 87.3% um, have are under, you know, are in the vaccination cycle, which means that 35% um, about 35% of people have received both doses of the vaccine at this point, and 50 about 52% have received one dose. So that includes also Johnson Johnson. Um, so 52% are on the way to being fully vaccinated. And so that's good. I mean, they're still behind us because they didn't have um, the, the vaccines available. And they're about six weeks behind us, let's say. But they're certainly, it's looking very good. So 52% are fully, are, have one dose at this point. I think by mid-August, they're going to be close to 60%. And then by the time we go, it should be really close to where we are now in the United States, which is- So when may I ask you if God forbid you have to pull the plug and say, we can't do this. Mm -hmm. I mean, how far out are you going to be? I'll communicate with you. For the, uh, the October trip. You yeah, know? I mean, we have, um, you know, one of the, can the cancellation policy on that trip is two weeks before. And that's because we have to cancel two weeks before, before uh, right. to get the money back. Right. So for me, I'm also, my money's on the line here too. And I want to, and like I did in 2020, everyone got all their money back. And so even with the cancellation policy, what it is, it's really to try and make sure that you know that I'm serious about letting us know what's going on. And, um, you know, my, my background is I'm a communications professional. That's what I did for Columbia University full-time for nine years as I was the director of communications. <laughs> so, mm -hmm. so for me, it's really about 
making sure that you have the information you need and that for me, it's my reputation. So if it means returning every dime to you, then I will, and we'll figure out how to deal with your flights and, and, uh, and the travel insurance. And that's what I did in, in 2020. And that's what we'll do here. And I'm really hoping that we don't have to. So, um, but, and will you send the travel insurance? Will you send the names of the travel insurance so I could look at it and yeah, tomorrow I have uh, time decide to... because I have, you know, I already took insurance on the flight. Mm-hmm. So I Good. have to see what, you know, whether it's comparable, uh, you know, if I have to cancel the, the flight one and if this one carries the whole right. thing or whatever. Yeah. So I have right. to make that decision. Yes. Okay. I'll put some stuff together for you. Great. I'm positive. I'm optimistic. I'm excited. So good. Um, One of the things I'll need from you is the traveler information um, form that I sent you a link and I can send you a link. It's just because I need your birthday. (laughs) Oh, I I didn't have, I didn't. Okay. Just send it to me. I'll I'll send it to you because that's very important because the travel insurance is based on where you live. So you're in New York state. That's very important. Uh, how old you are. And then of course, where you're traveling to and how long your trip is. So okay. much. The okay. Trip is. Those are the send, I, I, I thought I saw it in my forms, but maybe yeah. not. So send well, that to me and I'll take care of it. We'll take care of it tomorrow. You'll hear from me. Cause I had to get, okay, great. Tonight, and, uh, tomorrow we'll, we'll get on that for sure. Okay. Great. Um, say something about, Oh yes. Jilda, would you talk about Liquid sure. Kavea? I think hearing from you would be fantastic. So Secret Sicily, again, is, is hosted in Liquid Kavea. Tell us about it. Well, uh, it was 2018. I, you know, so much time has passed. Yeah, 2019. Yes. Mm-hmm. And I, I have to say, uh, I did not want to go to Sicily in July because I knew how hot it would be. <laughs> but right. I took this trip because I knew Allison and I put my trust in her type of trip. And I had the most marvelous time. It was the beginning of a month long time that I spent in Sicily. I spent eight days with you? Uh, 10, we were on a 10 day trip, yeah. And then I went on my own. But the beginning set the tone for my entire month because Lucadia Eubea is this charming little town where you feel like you get to know everybody. And as soon as I, I was staying right across from the central bar in a, in a wonderful uh, B&B, I got close to the family that owned the place. They took me back to the airport to Palermo. We're now family. I talk to them all the time. I'm friends with the daughter and it became a family affair. Now I speak Italian, which helped to make this possible, but uh, the, the whole trip was just marvelous. I mean, yes, there are UNESCO sites and yes, there is the incredible um, follow-up that Allison does with everyone on the tour. And one of the things I can mention, I just happened to say to Allison one day on the bus that we took to every site where we were going, uh, what about opera? And she went back to her room or at some point during the day, brought up information on Trapani which is in the Northwest of Sicily. She gave me all the information. Now it turns out I had to go to Trapani to the box office to get a ticket, which I did by the way, I never told you, but as part of my trip, I did go to the opera. Excellent. And you know, it was just that step beyond that made it possible for me to follow through and to do what I love the most, which is what you want from anybody who's trying to give you an experience. Yes. So I, I can't recommend Allison and the people she works with more. Oh, thank you, Jill. <laughs> no, really, it was, uh, I'm, I'm glad we're friends, but. Me too. <laughs> and, you know, and, and it's, it's, uh, it's people like Jilda who have an open heart, open mind, and are a curiosity that, um, that, you know, you let you let Sicily wash over you, right? And and that's part of the joy of, of it all is. Uh, and let me just say one more thing. I had been to Sicily before, on my own, a, a trip that I planned with my mother ten years before. Uh, but I wanted to get the history. I wanted a bit more immersion, and that's why I went with Allison. So uh, just to add to the picture I'm giving. <laughs> 
Thank you. Yeah. So, you know, uh, like Jill was saying, I mean, part of it is um, that for me, as someone with Sicilian heritage, um, and I traveled all over Europe as a young person backpacking myself, I remember what made that trip happen for me in terms of the impression that it left on me. My own trip was the people I met. And when I met my cousins in Sicily uh, for the first time when I was 23, um, and also in Rome, which they were seeing my Sicilian cousins living in Rome, for example, it just was the interaction with them. And I didn't speak Italian when I first started traveling to Sicily, but the interaction with them was so special um, for me that I, I wanted to create travel experiences for other people that could, could touch you in the same way that I was touched. And so that's, that's the mission of Experience Sicily and why I named the company Experience Sicily in 2013. Um, now everyone talks about experiential tourism. In 2013, no one was talking about tourism in an experiential way. For me back then, it was all about that. I wanted you to get your hands in the dough. I wanted you to get your feet in the ash of Mount Etna. I wanted you to feel the, 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 the wind in your hair on the sea, on the boat excursion. Um, when I uh, you know, travel through the center of Sicily driving, I would look at the mountains and say, I wanna know those little villages over on that, that hillside. And we do, we go into those villages on our tours um, because that's where it happens. That's where the magic happens on those, those really particular places. Certainly beautiful spots too. Those are magical as well. Um, and, and, you know, I, I don't let people travel to Sicily without seeing Valley of the Temples, if, if at all possible, you know, it's a must see. But in addition to Valley of the Temples, I want you to go to Sant'Angelo Muxarello or Muxaro, Sant'Angelo Muxaro and, and meet the sheep and meet the, the cheese maker, because those are the interactions you remember. And that's what makes travel spectacular is really, is really the, those experiences, those people that you meet. So yeah, um, <laughs> Cheryl, thank you, Cheryl. I appreciate that comment of for the, um, the despite the crazy people. Yes, thank you very much. <laughs> um, so I'm so glad tonight's been informative. Let me know if anyone else has another question. Um, I'm gonna wrap up because my husband so patiently is waiting to have dinner. <laughs> We're kind of on European time in my house anyway, so it's sort of normal to eat at nine o'clock, but certainly I wanna, um, answer anyone and and um like like i said this has been recorded um and i will be posting the link on youtube uh for you to watch it and share it and also feel free to reach out i'd love to hear from you um i'd love to see you with me in october i don't want you to hesitate for october because i feel very confident about it and so do my colleagues in sicily and 2022 for sure our tours are starting to fill up so um, I hope you'll you'll get your reservations in and we can we can get you to Sicily and have some of these heartwarming sensational and I mean that in terms of making you have goosebumps <laughs> um, experiences in Sicily so that's what I hope for. So thank you all so much and I look forward to to interacting with you in the future and hosting you in Sicily. Nancy, get your name in for, for stirring Sicily. <laughs> All right, everyone. Thank you so much. Have a wonderful, wonderful evening. Take Good night. Care. Good night. Bye-bye.